Hello everyone, this is Nikita. How are you all? Hope you are doing great. So this video we would talk about job scheduler and queue processor in Pega. This topic is very important and uh, in interview you will surely get a question from job scheduler or queue processor. So let us first understand what is job scheduler and queue processor and then we will go practically in Pega Dev Studio and see how can we configure them. So this is the agenda of this video. So let's jump into our PPT. We have our job scheduler and queue processor. So what is a job scheduler? First of all, job scheduler and queue processor was not present in Pega from the very beginning. After 8.1, they have introduced job scheduler and queue processor in Pega. So uh, this is a replacement of standard and advanced agent that we used to have before 8.x. Now the job scheduler and queue processor has taken that place. So coming to job scheduler, it is a replacement of advanced agent that we used to have in eight, before 8.x. And uh, why we use a job scheduler? It is used to run any task in background. Like we want to send emails at particular time, um, you know, during off business hours, or we want to change the status of a case, or we want to archive some items or queue any items. All these kind of uh, tasks are like a background task which can be done without any user intervention. So these things can be configured in a job scheduler. So you can run this job at any specific time in a day. You can run it monthly, you can run it daily, you can run it only in weekdays or only in weekend. All of these kind of things you can do. And even you can run it in one node, in any one particular node or any or multiple nodes. You can run this on one type of node also, like you want to run it only background processing type of node. So that is also possible. Now coming to the class, the, it belongs to the class rule async job scheduler. Okay. Now let's go to queue processor. So what is queue processor? Queue processor has been introduced from 8.x, same when job scheduler was introduced. It is a replacement of standard agent. So you in interview, you might get a question like this. Queue processor is a replacement of what rule? Uh, so you need to say that it's standard agent and for job scheduler, it is an advanced agent. So what does a queue processor do? It runs the queued task in a background. So when anything is queued, uh, when any case or when any, any, when any item is queued, so this particular queue processor will run those tasks in the background without any user intervention. So task can be queued through run in background shape uh, or queue for processing method in an activity. So in those ways you can queue, uh, you can actually queue any item and queue processor will run those items. And you can also specify the number of retries needed. Suppose when you are trying to run that activity, queue processor activity, and uh, you had some issues uh, or error. So it can also retry that same activity if you specify the number of retries needed. So all these things are built in and you can use them. Now we will go into our Pega Studio. So where do you see a job scheduler? It comes under a sysadmin and job scheduler. Here you will find the list, list of all the job scheduler present, some out of the box and the ones which you have created. So now when you open a job scheduler, what do you see? You cannot actually modify it without checking out or doing stuff. So uh, what all option you have? First of all, you can enable or disable the job scheduler through this toggle button. That is a very important feature. Now, as I told you, associated with node types, you want your job scheduler to run on what kind of node. So node can be classified into many types like a background processing node or it's a web user node, etc, etc. So this particular job scheduler, what type of node on what type of node you want to run this job scheduler. That is what here we specify associated with node type. You can see uh, the different nodes, uh, node types which are present and you can assign whichever you want. Mostly for job scheduler, you will always use background processing uh, type of node. 
now what is a schedule schedule is this uh, you know the time on which we want to run this job scheduler we can we can want to run it multiple times a day like after every few minutes or after every few hours or after every few second that is also a possibility or you can run it daily at uh, like every one day or every week day only in the week day you want to run and you can specify the start time okay at what time you want to run that activity you can also run it weekly monthly or yearly and also you have the uh, option to specify the time zone maybe you want to run it at this particular time in asia calcutta time zone or you want to run it at this time in new york time zone that you can specify it here now what is a context so you want to use the system runtime context or you want to specify your own access group and you want to give the access group uh, on the context of which this particular job scheduler will run okay so what is the difference between them first of all what is a system runtime context so system runtime context you can see you can go here and you will find the system runtime context so whatever uh, context you specify here this job scheduler will take it uh, according to that so here you can specify the application uh, you can also you know arrange it whatever you want the way you want it uh, when you uh, keep it as specify access group then you will need to specify the particular access group on the context of which this particular job scheduler will run mostly we use system runtime context so that uh, you know the whatever is specified in the application uh the access group that access group will be used to run this particular job scheduler now the class you can specify the class and you can specify the activity that actually this is the job scheduler activity which runs you need to specify the correct class of this activity and uh you can also specify the parameter if suppose this job scheduler has to take some parameters you can uh, specify the parameter suppose in this activity if i would have created any uh, parameters uh here you can pass that parameter okay so these are the things you can do in an job scheduler you can specify the millisecond for the alerts to run suppose your particular job scheduler runs more than 10 seconds right you can specify that particular timing here at that time after which you will see an alert in your logs that this particular job scheduler is running more than the threshold value the timing is important suppose job scheduler is running for 10 minutes or 20 minutes that is not something that we desire for any job to be run so maybe there is some problem in that job scheduler or it is running in some infinite loop so you need to have that alert there in the logs so that you know that you need to change something in the job scheduler okay so this was about job scheduler now coming to queue processor where do you find a queue processor for queue processor you need to go to sys admin and then queue processor okay so what are the things that you do in a queue processor similar to job scheduler it also runs with the context we specify in the system runtime context then you have the queue processor enable or disable toggle button which you can use uh, similar to job scheduler you have the node type uh, you know association you can provide what type of node you want this queue processor to run now you can also specify whether you want this uh, particular queue processor to run immediate or uh, in in some delay okay so here you can specify that and what are the num uh, number of threads per node like per node how many threads you want that queue processor to have okay so default value is 1 but you can increase it according to your need now you need to uh, specify the class and the activity of the queue processor you can also specify the maximum attempts uh, as i told you so you can also specify the number of retries you want this particular queue processor to do suppose the first attempt failed you wanted to run two more times uh, what is initial delay uh, maybe you want the queue processor to wait for certain minutes uh, after that you want the queue processor activity to run so you can specify that now long running configuration is same as i told you for job scheduler 
uh, whatever time you specify if it queue process is running more than that time you will get an alert in the log so this was an overview of job scheduler and queue processor uh, and where and where do you see the job scheduler and queue processor which are running so you, for that you need to go to the admin studio you can see all the job scheduler or queue processor which are running in your uh, application so here you have to go to the jobs and here you will find all the jobs you can you can know whether it is running or it is what is the state it is enabled or disabled if it is enabled you can also override it to disable it uh, you can see the duration and when did it finish last and when will it run again the next run uh, how many executions it has done all this kind of stuff you can check here now queue processor for queue processor, you can also see how the queue processor which are in the running state and you can also start and stop the queue processor or job scheduler as well. So here you will see a lot of, uh, you know, queue processor here. You can stop them, you can disable them, all these kind of things you can do. Okay. You can see the class and the node type it is stacked to the number of queue item which are in the schedule state the item is queued now it has to run uh, broken means the uh, queued item couldn't uh, finish because of some reason and it got broken and it would come here in the broken state ready to process is like after scheduled this uh, item moves to the ready to process and then it processes the item uh, processed in last hour how many uh, items have been processed in the last hour you can see the number here okay so this was a quick overview of job scheduler and queue processor. In the next video, we would practically create a job scheduler and queue processor. And then uh, we would also learn how to trace any job scheduler and queue processor for any error. Okay. See you again in my next video. Till then, bye-bye.